what I really enjoy doing uh, is the marketing. I love testing new marketing strategies. How do we get um, lead flow coming in every day? I tell real estate investors all the time, unless you've got consistent leads from motivated sellers coming into your pipeline every day, you don't have a business, you've got a hobby. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Thank you, Jay, for taking a minute out. I'm looking forward to getting into your real estate world, so thanks for taking a minute out. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here. I am too. So let's begin with something I know we're all getting fatigued with, but it was very central in our lives for a while. How did you survive that COVID time period? And how did it change the way that you do business now? Yeah, good question. So interestingly enough, uh, well, first let me say this. So my expertise in real estate investing is raising private money, sharing with other real estate investors how to go about raising private money for your real estate deals without ever having to ask for money. Uh, so we don't borrow from banks. We don't borrow from hard money lenders. And uh, we do a lot of flips, a lot of rehabs. We've done over 500 of those here in Eastern North Carolina. So to your question, what happened in COVID? It's really, really interesting. Prior to COVID, there was $18 trillion in cash sitting on the sidelines. Uh, this side of COVID, $31 trillion. So all this cash has come into the market available where people just didn't know what to do with their investment capital or their retirement funds to get a good rate of return. So after COVID came along, I actually had, I started having more money chasing me. Uh, and so I ended up with a problem and still have the problem today, and that is there's more money available than there are deals quite frankly. So, and of course, we all know what happened with the crazy rise up in prices of single family houses and real estate within a year to two years after COVID came along. So the bottom line answer to your question, for whatever reason, uh, more money is available today than ever before uh, for to use for real estate investing. And so from that angle, it's been a positive. So let's get to the heart and soul of what you do do right now in 2024. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at career day. And one of the curious kids says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? What I do for a living is I help a lot of people in different ways. So I help my private lenders make high rates of returns safely and securely. And then I help uh, sellers of houses that are in some kind of pain and trouble that need to sell either their properties in distress, their personal lives are in distress. So we come along with a solution to purchase their houses and help them get out of uh, debt and, uh, and being stressed out. And then of course we work with a lot of uh, contractors on rehabbing houses. So that's the long answer. The short answer is what do I do? I'm a flipper. Just like on HGTV, except what I do is real and not made up. <laughs> so what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? Oh, I wanted to be a magician. <laughs> <laughs> so you're good at magic. So I'm very good at magic. Yes. Excellent. How how does that work together with, I mean, that's kind of a right brain. I mean, it's right and left brain. How does that work with you and the real estate prowess? How does that come together? Yeah, it's all it's all a creative process. So, you know, when you're fixing and flipping houses, I love to watch the creative process of, you know, turning a lemon into lemonade. Um, I've got a fantastic team. I've got the same interior designer for the past 20 years that we've been doing this, working with the same contractors for that same length of time. But um, there's never two days alike in this business. What I really enjoy doing uh, is the marketing. I love testing new marketing strategies. How do we get um, lead flow coming in every day? I tell real estate investors all the time, unless you've got 
consistent leads from motivated sellers coming into your pipeline every day. You don't have a business. You've got a hobby. So take me back to the beginnings in North Carolina to your childhood. What were these foundational seeds that were planted into you that made you evolve into this this place of understanding real estate, running your own business, and even magic? How did all of this happen? <laughs> well, I owe a lot to my dad, Wallace Connor. And uh, in a couple of months, he's going to be 91 years old. And he's in the middle of a development building out 350 houses right now at uh, 91 years old. Anyway, um, I owe a lot to my dad because at one time his company was the largest retailer of manufactured homes in the nation. And so he put me to work uh, in the summers starting when I was 12 years old. And um, we actually still have landlines here in North Carolina with cords attached to them. But he so put antiquated. The, yes, he put me on the telephone, uh, checking out people's credit and calling their landlords and uh, calling the furniture companies to see if they made their payments on time because he had his own acceptance corporation. So he manufactured, most people call them mobile homes or trailers, manufactured homes. So I grew up around my dad and his company. Uh, that offered affordable housing for people. So I was on the telephone and I was checking out people's credits. So my communication skills were developed at a very, very you know young age, talking talking professionally over the phone. And uh, and I saw how he ran his company. Uh, he was known and still is known as the 3D guy, which stands for dictate, delegate, and disappear. So I learned from my dad how to get out of your own way so you can run your business instead of having your business run you. So being around dad and his company, of course, played into this world of real estate for me. So talk to me a little bit about heroes. Who's been that inspiration, that hero that's fueled your rise and who you are today? Well, I've had a lot of heroes. Uh, one hero is Zig Ziglar. Of course, he has passed away, but Zig Ziglar was one of my heroes. Um, when I was in sales in my dad's company, we were required to listen, and I'm going to date myself now. We were required to listen to all of Zig Ziglar's cassette tape trainings wow. and, take, and take a test. So I love Zig's philosophy. You help enough other people get what they want and need. You don't have to worry about yourself. So I grew up with this, having this servant's heart and a servant's attitude, leading with serving first. So Zig Ziglar was definitely one of my, my heroes. Um, when I was 23 years old, uh, a cousin of my mother uh, sent me the book, mailed me the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. So shortly after I moved to Texas at 23 years old, I took the Dale Carnegie Human Relations Principle course uh, that we met uh, one time a week for 12 weeks. So Dale Carnegie was a um, a hero of mine. And then a third one was Ogmandino, the first book that had the biggest transformation uh, and influence on my life was a book that he wrote by the title of University of Success. University of Success, that book is still in print. It changed my life. And um, and I was also um, also very, very fortunate to get to know and be around quite a bit Jack Can Canfield, who is the co-author of the uh, soup, uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul series. In fact, I got designated as one of his um, certified trainers on the success principles. There's another great book, The Success Principles by Jack Can Canfield. Great book. So if you can meet a business mind, business leader alive today that's doing wonderful work that you admire, spend a little time with him, who would it be? John Maxwell. Yeah. John Maxwell. I did actually get to shake his hand last week and get a picture with him and heard him do a two hour uh, talk. The best speaker I've ever heard in my life. He was amazing. I'm in a mastermind group and our mastermind group had him come speak, but I'd love to have some one on one time with John yeah. Maxwell. Yeah. So what is the motivation for you every day to wake up and to do the good work that you do and to evolve as a human being and to continue to stay um, curious and, and willing to learn? What is that for you every day? Um, I've gotten to a point in my life 
that if I wanted to be a couch potato, I could uh, financially, but uh, I have a fear of being bored to death. <laughs> and so I stay very, very busy. So what gets me up and going is I reach this point in my life of what we call significance or making an impact. And uh, that's why I do multiple live events a year and speak with people and motivate them and teach them what I know about real estate. Um, nothing thrills me more than to be a part of somebody else's transformation, financially and mentally. So the one thing about a career arc is there tends to be kind of an up and down. There's things that can dip here and there. Was there a particular time in your career that was maybe taxing or exacting, but it you grew a lot? It ended up being something that was advantageous or good for you at the end. Was there a Absolutely. time like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, the, the most monumental experience immediately comes to mind when you ask that question. My wife, Carol Joy, and I, we started investing in single family houses here in eastern North Carolina all the way back in 2003. And from 2003 until January of 2009, all I knew to do, uh, Joe, was go to the local bank where I had my lines of credit. And all I needed to do was get on my hands and knees and put my hands underneath my chin and say, please fund my deal and lift my skirt up so my banker could look at all my personal assets and give me a colonoscopy and, you know, do everything I could to get the loans for my real estate deals. That worked okay that first six years until January 2009. I called up my banker. His name was Steve. He had funded a ton of deals for me in that first six years. And I called him up to tell him about two houses that I had under contract that represented over $100,000 in potential profit. And I learned, Joe, like that over the phone that my line of credit had been closed with no notice to me. And I said to Steve, I said, Steve, what in the world are you telling me my line of credit is closed? And, you know, I've always made my payments on time. I got a great credit score. He said, Jay, don't you know there's a global financial crisis going on right now? I said, no, but you just gave me a financial crisis. I don't have a way to fund these two deals. And uh, so I hung up the phone, Joe, and I sat here at this very desk. And I asked myself a question. By the way, these people running around saying, Oh, every problem's an opportunity. I want to throw up. I didn't have an opportunity. I had a problem, right? Yeah. So I sat here and I asked myself a very powerful question. And this question that I'm going to share with you and your audience can help you fix any problem you got going on in your life. By the way, the powers and the questions, right? The right questions. So here's the question I asked myself. I said, Jay, who do you know that can help you with your problem? And I immediately thought of Jeff Blankenship, good friend of mine and Carol Joy's. We know him through church. He lived in Greensboro, North Carolina at the time, and he was investing in real estate, single family houses. So I called him up and I told him what had just happened with me losing my line of credit. He said, well, welcome to the club, Jay. I said, what club is that? He said, the club of having your bank shut you down. My bank just shut me down last week. Now, bear in mind, this was all taking place in January 2009. My next thought was, well, I'm calling the wrong friend. He's in the same boat I am. So I asked Jeff, I said, Jeff, how are you going to fund your real estate deals? He said, well, have you heard of private money and private lending? I said, no. He said, well, have you heard of self-directed IRAs and how individuals can move their current retirement uh, funds over to a self-directed IRA company, and they can loan that money out either tax-free or tax-deferred to us real estate investors, and they can earn high rates of return safely and securely. I said, no, I never heard of that. So anyway, Jeff told me about it. I studied it. So I put my program together, and I started teaching people. That's how I raised private money without asking for it. I put on my teacher hat, lead with a servant's heart, private money teacher, We've got 47 private lenders right now funding our deals. They never even heard of private money till I told them about it. So when I went about teaching what private money was, I was able to raise and attract $2,150,000 in less than 90 days. I don't say that to brag at all. The reason I'm sharing this story is that it actually was, in retrospect, the biggest blessing in disguise uh, that I've had ever since my real estate investing career all the way back to 2003. One thing that I learned from John Maxwell, 
is that there is always, and here's a writer downer, no matter what the problem is, there's always an answer. And in fact, there's always more than one answer. And, you know, an important formula that I learned from Jack Canfield in his um, Success Principles book, chapter number one, is take responsibility for everything that happens in your life. Don't be a victim. Be a victor. And here's his formula, which absolutely, that I actually practiced in that story that I just told you about. I just didn't know I was practicing it. The formula is E plus R equals O. The E stands for the event, any event that happened in your, that's happened in your life. Maybe you brought it on, maybe you didn't. So that's the event. The R stands for your response to the event. We have the choice. We have the power to respond to any event and put any kind of filter on that that we want to. And that determines the outcome that you're experiencing. Unfortunately, Joe, most people walking around live by a different formula. The formula most people walk around living by is E equals O. Whatever the event is that happened in my life, oh, that determines my outcome. That's not true. Your response, which you get to choose, gets to determine your outcome, which means you can be in control of your destiny. So that's what I did with that story I just shared. Yeah. The event that happened, I lost my line of credit. Yeah. I didn't bring that on. That was a global financial crisis. I could have gone home and put my tail between my legs and just sat at home, or I could have looked for a better and quicker way to fund my deals, which I did by asking who can help me. Therefore, because of that, the outcome is Joe, you and I are visiting today because of that event. And because I moved on to this world of private, but private money and being able to, you know, share with others about how I go about doing it. Best case scenario, cause and effect for sure. So let me ask you this. Of everything that you've done and clearly overcome and evolved into at this point in your life, what are you the proudest of? What, I, what am I the proudest of? Yeah. Um, choosing the right mate. <laughs> there you go. Good job. We're, we're, get, we're getting ready to celebrate our 38-year wedding anniversary. Um, I've, her name is Carol joy that I've mentioned. I always talk about Carol joy and I met her my first Sunday in town in Wichita falls, Texas. When I moved to Texas all the way back when I was 23 years old. So, um, of course I got to give dad my credit. I give credit. Uh, dad said, I said, dad, if you could give me any advice, uh, as I move out to Texas from here in North Carolina, what would it be? He said, Meet a girl at church. That's who you want to marry. Meet a girl at church. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It takes a team to win. That's for sure. So at the end of the day, everyone out there has a perception of you. There's all these people in different spheres, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I think I'm one of the most positive people that ever walked on the planet. Um, I, I just really do. I, I think that, um, no matter what happens that, you know, we can, we can make some good out of it back to the E plus R equals O. And I learned this from some book I read. I don't even remember what book it was years ago, but when something happens and you perceive it to be bad or a challenge at the time that it's happening, then step back and Put on your observer hat. Don't let yourself stay like in it with your emotions, but step back and look at it. Um, I actually learned that from my dad. Uh, When I was working in his company uh, years ago, um, he would have meetings with us and the leadership team, and we'd have a problem. And my dad would sit back in his chair and he'd say, boys, this problem is just too big for this afternoon. Let's come back and take a look at this tomorrow. And you know, inevitably we'd come back and look at that situation and you look at it tomorrow. It can have a whole new perspective Yeah, or you can. Yeah, for sure. Well said. So if anyone is interested, they want to reach out, learn more about what you're doing, any of the good business, where can they go? Absolutely. Well, if you're listening to this show, and you've got any interest in real estate investing, and you don't want to ever have to worry 
about having funding for your real estate deals. I just launched my brand new private money challenge. And I'd love to invite you that are listening to the show to my challenge. You can go to www.privatemoneychallenge.com. Privatemoneychallenge.com. It's a series of seven videos. They're short, only 15 to 20 minutes. But it'll get you on the fast track to getting private money and funding for your real estate deals. And I promise you, we'll have fun doing it together as well. Privatemoneychallenge.com. Excellent. Jay, love the optimism. Love the story. Thank you, sir, for your work. Keep doing the great work and putting the light out in the world. God bless you, Joe. Thanks for having me. Same to you. Thank you. Take care. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Conner.